Hello. Hopefully it will be 100% and we'll see about that. Also, first of all, uh, happy Valentine's Day. That's also Lara's birthday, by the way. Oh, Ooh. very true. Yes. Trivia. Ooh, I had to, give, I I had to get that one out of the way before you take <laughs> over <laughs> because <laughs> it's my only Tomb Raider knowledge. Okay. Okay. Anyways. So, uh, yeah, 100% and uh, we'll get more into what that all entails. But first of all, please introduce yourself. Hello. I'm a Epic Dude Guy. I play this game any percent. So I know about uh, 100% uh, <laughs> I know it very well. <laughs> nice. Uh, hello, I am uh, Jan Mamrik. I uh, have played this game. I have <laughs> run this game as well. Uh, it might have been a little while since I did it, uh, so I might be a bit rusty. But I will uh, be here to support uh, our beloved friend Kadrav in his endeavor to 100%. Yes, just every five minutes kick me so I don't fall asleep, that's good. Yes. Okay, so yeah, and um, we will start once I click on normal. So we run on normal because on easy there is aim assist and that's bad. Um, yeah, so we'll start in three, two, one, go. Oh, I already filled my <laughs> one <laughs> job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can do redemption to stop the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like so <laughs> uh, at first we have a somewhat lengthy uh, intro, um, so that's already a good start. Uh, so regarding story, um, so this is the r first reboot game, which obviously came out in 2013. Um, Lara uh, is just uh, just got shipwrecked on a Japanese island, and uh, yeah, finds herself in a somewhat precarious situation. Uh, more on this development uh, soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> yes, that uh, I guess uh, not, uh, but yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, this game was uh, supposed to be called uh, Ascension first. Tomb now Raider Ascension. That is very interesting. But then they came up with a good name, Tomb Raider. <laughs> 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 Which can be somewhat misleading because uh, tombs are actually optional in this game, oh. but not for 100%. Ah. Um, but yeah, so oh no. this is obviously the uh, tutorial area. And uh, first we have to get down to solid ground, which the best way to do that is uh, set yourself on fire, apparently, but uh, via chicanery. Usually in this game when you're stuck, you're supposed to put something on fire. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but right now we don't have too much choice other than ourselves. Um, and then we will uh, tumble down and I will uh, get, uh, yeah in contact with something not so pleasant. And once I remove this rebar, uh, you will hopefully see me quit out to main menu. Uh, and then we will uh, continue from there. Because we get a checkpoint here and that we want to reload. Nice. Good job. Yeah, so when you reload the game there, there's a couple of extra fr frames where you can do inputs, and Lara's in a weird state uh, where if you get a jump in, in time, you can go forward and have no collision, so you can uh, go through the wall and out of bounds here. Yeah, so Lara's movement is restricted most of the time here, so me being able to jump there, that was only very temporary, because now I can't. She's only able to walk, and obviously you're not quite supposed to be here, so it's not the most stable experience. So I already got stuck, that's good. Um, yeah, so you obviously don't want to go back inbounds yet. And we also don't want to drop into the void, because that's equally as not good. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, maybe we can talk about what we're exactly skipping here, because so far not too much, actually. Yeah, there's some uh, just uh, minor introductions to uh, game mechanics. Uh, but then uh, there's a, an annoying puzzle section uh, later on, which takes quite some time to do. So uh, we just go past all of that. So this little room right here. Yeah, to the right there's like a big puzzle room that I almost went back into. Nice. But yeah, we skipped all of that. Um, so now we're uh, out of here. Yeah, you basically, you need to complete the entire section to save any time at all. Yes. The, the hardest part is at the end. <laughs> There is a smaller out of bounds we hopefully can do here. If you jump to the very right side of this uh, ledge, yeah, you can already see Lara clipping through this uh, boat or whatever it was. 
And now uh, we just bypass one QTE that would like waste seven seconds or so, where Laura would get grabbed by uh, a savage and he tries to pull her back, but then she escapes. But now there is no savage, only very weird camera angles. And uh, yeah, so then we just uh, mash and hopefully get out of here. So, so far, um, this is exactly the same as you would play this in any percent. There are no collectibles yet or anything. So, 100% basically aims to get 100% of the map completion. Whenever we would open the map, you can like, you get certain collectibles or like list of collectibles you can get in each level. We want all of those. And towards those or to, towards that count uh, campfires. So that is just your checkpoints, basically. You can travel to um, GPS caches, documents, relics, tombs, which are optional challenges in a game called Tomb Raider. Um, what else? Just like normal challenges, which are like very different things. We'll soon encounter the first one. Um, treasure maps, if there are any. And uh, yeah, just in total, I think it's roughly 240 or something collectibles. But I guess in any percent, you would still get a few of them, especially the campfires, because obviously you just unlock them when you run past them. But yeah, most of the like actual collectibles that you pick off, off the ground, you don't really care about in any percent. Bye. Saved. <laughs> yes, for some reason the camera gets stuck there. I think it's a glitched only experience, but I'm uh, not quite sure because I don't run glitched. Okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, due to the out of bounds part. Yeah, probably. Because I'm bad, I can't do the out of bounds <laughs> and I haven't <laughs> seen that so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is still um, tutorial level ish. Um, just also like learning how to climb soon and. Uh, Stuff like that, but uh, once we get to the next campfire, it's when the uh, two roads between any percent and one hundred percent would start to differ. Yeah, the movement in this game is really nice to do. So you you have this move where you do the slide, and then you can chain a jump into it. And we usually bind the sliding to mouse wheel down and the jumping to mouse wheel up, so you can do the movement really quickly, really smoothly. It's very very fun to do. And at the start, in most cases, it's fastest to do the scramble jumps. So, you, yeah, as Robbie said, you first scramble and then jump. In certain areas, um, it's actually faster to roll, especially when it's windy or like your jumping speed is reduced by the game, which is why I roll here, for example. Um, later on, we will learn another technique that then will like take over the spot as fastest movement technique, but yeah, more on that once we're there. Right now we're just looking for other survivors of our expedition, and uh, apparently this is the pack of one of our friends, so that's a hint. Okay. Also there are a few uh, checkpoint reloads, this is just to uh, save time on Lara standing up slowly here for example, so uh, that's that, and this is the first campfire. After this, as I said, uh, Soon the routes will diverge. Um, I guess until then we can uh, actually read some donations. Or not. Alrighty, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> we've got. Uh, we do have a hundred dollars here from anonymous. It's just taken aback. That's all. A hundred dollars here from anonymous uh, with no commentary. So thank you very much, anonymous. Uh, we do have twenty dollars from Holy saying, "Let's go." And another fifty dollars from Robe XD, also saying, "Let's go." So uh, yeah, let's get going. Thank you very much, everybody. So Laura here just spotted a bow, very conveniently uh, available to her, and we actually really want that one, not just because it's uh, like the starter weapon, but soon we'll also see it can be used for some other nefarious things. It's not yeah. the averted by the previous owner of the bow. <laughs> <laughs> the state of the previous owner. Um, this is where my superior aim comes into play. Nice three shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and this is where the paths now diverge. So there I've shot a totem. So that's the challenge in this area. I need to shoot ten in total. Um, so that's like one kind of challenge. And these are GPS caches. They're actually pretty hard to spot, uh, unless you really know where they are. Like they do blink, but uh, yeah, they're very, very small. 
Um, here there's a spot where you can actually snipe one of the totems from rather far away. You're supposed to go back to the campfire, but we just don't uh, and snipe it from there. I'm just getting rid of s a few more totems here. Uh, if I can find it. Because brown, totem on brown background can be a bit tricky to spot at times. Yeah. And with like that's this area pretty much done when it comes to collectibles. Now we just proceed with the story. So Lara would now like get or yeah, carve out meat from the deer and then go back to the campfire. But uh, we will not do that. First here we will pick up a document. More on the prompt you saw there a bit later once I get through this. Uh, once I get through this. <laughs> Thank you. So this is what we mainly use the bow for. Besides like the 20 collectibles <laughs> you <laughs> are used for. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, I feel this is more useful. True. Yeah, you can pretty easily clip through a lot of things in this game by uh, yeah, either just going backwards into it and then doing the bash backwards. There's a certain move where you bash you can do it backwards, but there's also the ways of weapon swapping that lets you clip or... Yeah, there's a lot of ways to clip, <laughs> which we will yeah. explore. Yeah, but they usually involve the use of weapons in one way or another, yeah. so as long as we have those, we have a lot more possibilities to proceed. <coughs> and we're now leaving this uh, bunker and we will not proceed the intended way, which would actually lead us into like a scripted event basically where Lara would get her leg trapped in a bear trap and wolves would attack her um, but we will not do that we will try to completely bypass that trigger by clipping on top of the bunker at the top and unsurprisingly for that we will also use the bow yeah this clip is slightly different because we're now clipping inside an object and it will push Lara upwards but only half <laughs> the camera is still down so he has to go over that ledge for their uh, so there's space for the camera to merge again with the body yeah it makes sense <laughs> <laughs> so uh here is actually our friend and there is a very suspicious person but uh, don't worry about them so this is clearly because we bypassed the trigger uh, they should not be there anymore but then uh, we will just leave them and pretend we didn't see them and proceed in the second into the second half of this uh, first forest level which is like the first bigger-ish area. Um, yeah, so about these prompts, whenever we open or collect a document or a relic, the game would automatically um, open up the inventory once Lara would like finish the animation to show us what we collected. But having the Alt F4 prompt open actually prevents that like from happening. So with each one of those collectibles, when we have the prompt open, we save like a second. And since there are quite a few of those throughout the run, uh, that adds up pretty nicely just requires me to like always somewhat panicking because I need to completely change what I'm pressing. Uh, but yeah, we're making somewhat good progress. This is one of the few numbers I know that is correct. <laughs> like I don't remember all of the numbers that I need to see, but 8 out of 10 looks good to me. And uh, we're just story-wise now making our way to a... that's not where I need to go. Uh, Story-wise, we're making our way to the uh, next campfire where we will meet uh, another one of our uh, expedition friends. Oh, yeah, friend. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a friend. Of dubious nature. So this should be the last relic here. And you may hear some uh, wolves approaching us. Don't worry about it. Or actually, maybe worry about them. Depending on if they actually pin me down or not. So they have a like lunge attack like that. If you're not rolling, or like, yeah, if you're not rolling and they hit you, yeah, they can pin you down, which would trigger a small QTE, and we obviously want to avoid that. Also, this looks fine. It's and fascinating. These are in fact fascinating. So this is the last totem, and then we can reload the checkpoint because right now I'm still considered to be in combat, so I cannot sit down at the at the campfire. And this is the last document of this area. Now we'll just uh, upgrade my. Uh, climbing axe and you're supposed to open the gate there with uh, the friend we dropped with saw there but we will do not do that 
um, despite Laura saying that we will do this. So there is this uh, suspicious clip here that allows us to bypass the gate and bypass uh, our friend and he just stays there. And uh, now we proceed by ourselves, but he will catch up, so uh, nothing was really gained apart from a uh, few seconds that we saved. And as it just so turns out on this uh, Japanese island, we will now get captured by Russians. It is Himiko. Which makes Himiko? sense. What do you that? Laura. Hello. So this is not the last time that Laura will get captured. <laughs> but as you may be able to tell, uh, yeah, our movement is somewhat restricted. Um, we have no weapons and we can only like uh, roll and jump. So right now it's just uh, us sneaking very uh, stealthily past some of these dorks and uh, trying to find some way to free ourselves out of this situation. Yeah, there's no way for Lara to undo the, the rope on her. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very convenient. But she definitely needs some kind of tool for that. Maybe that tool is determination. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> Sheer force of will. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a QT. That would also be interesting. Let's see what the solution is. So yeah, she has not chosen the best uh, hiding spot, I guess. Also, I was told this Russian is not the best Russian, <laughs> but I cannot confirm or deny. But interestingly, they re-recorded the Russian lines for the English dub. Like all other languages use the original Russian dub. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, anyways. Just break free. <laughs> <laughs> so you can shoot him there, but it actually does like it has no impact on anything. Like, just if you want to, you can. Saying this didn't have any impact? Yes. <laughs> It was self-defense. <laughs> exactly. So this is another area that will be um, inaccessible later on. So for all of those areas that become inaccessible, there are no collectibles, which is somewhat convenient because it's exactly the same as an any percent, so nothing to collect here. There is, however, a very uh, cool gun tutorial here that definitely never causes any problems. And an even pretty good to me. cooler skip here, if it works. Uh, well, that doesn't look promising. Never mind. So here you can use the weapon toggle to clip up the rock and uh, <laughs> avoid a million death triggers to skip like a small cut. Yeah, so usually you're supposed to go through that house, which would then get set on fire. Um, it just yeah it takes quite a bit longer, like 10 seconds or so. So we can just not do that. And now we're just making our way uh, further up this mountain in search of some other survivors, trying to survive ourselves. Ourself. Um, but once we're on top of this ladder, um, this will actually be an area that we can revisit later on, so there will be collectibles. And uh, yeah, <coughs> I need to remember where things are again. Um, but there really is not too much to say, apart from the challenge in this area is to not shoot totems, but the lanterns. So uh, definitely need to remember that. And uh, apart from that, yeah, more documents and also a few checkpoint reloads. But while I do that, I see we might have another do donation ready. Yeah, we do. Uh, looks like we've got uh, $5 here from 7Lara7 seven that says, Hello, this is Lara. Thank you for playing this introduction to the real Tomb Raider that will be happening on Saturday. Do your best and remember that Osiris will help you if you ask nicely. We also have a $10 donation from Satori Earth. Good luck, Caddy. Always a pleasure seeing your expert skills, even without bunny cam. May Laura behave for you. But hey, birthday girl will do what she wants. Thank she you for your donations, does. everybody. Thank you very much, both of you. That's not where I want to go. Um, yeah, so these two guys up here, you want to shoot with the pistol because apparently it's more silent to kill them with the pistol compared to the bow because if you shoot them with the bow it takes too long and they will alert the others but if you shoot them with a the very loud gun the others will not notice you yeah they will uh, convenient shout very loud instead 
louder than the pistol. And here we can do a neat little skip. You just cross this uh, gap. You can use the scramble jumping to extend your jump. Which lets you reach that point. Unintended. Okay, that's all of those. So yeah, some of these collectibles it actually like gives you like a prompt that shows you how many out of how many you have already collected, but that's not for all of them, sadly. So sometimes, uh, well, let's ho hope I will not I will not need to go back to collect stuff, but you never know. So for documents, for example, you just pick them up and that's it. Obviously, you could always like look at your map screen, or if you're at a campfire, there's like a fast travel screen that also shows you the collectibles, but. Uh, not very time efficient, speaking of. So sometimes the game can crash here. <laughs> does it crash as much in 100% uh, as it does in It's air? exactly the same, pretty much. Uh, but I'm sure it will not happen. Yes. Yeah, why would it crash here? Yes. Actually, no, it crashes way less in 100%. Yes. I crashed here on my first play. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're just making our way uh, into the actual first, I want to say, bigger hub area, which is the mountain village. So we will actually pass through this village on multiple levels. So there are like multiple levels to it, and we'll pass in and out of it multiple times throughout this run. And we'll change depending on like the events that happen. Yeah, so we found another one of our crew members. This is a checkpoint reload, just again to faster gain control of Alara. And here we just collect this remote GPS cache, and since we're like wading through water, it would be very slow to go back, so we just reload checkpoint. Luckily, like collectibles you collect still count as collected, even if you technically you go back in time to the checkpoint. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so <coughs> as I said, we will revisit this place a lot later on because we need some more uh, equipment to access some of the collectibles, so we just basically right now collect what is right in our way. Um, but what we mainly want to do is make our way to uh, the wolf's cave, because what you're supposed to do is retrieve the radio that our crew member uh, kind of got stolen off by the wolves up there. Um, but we might also just not do that if we find a better way to proceed. Hopefully. Enter Skywalk. <laughs> So there's this amazing glitch that you can do by sliding off a rock, then pivoting, and then you basically get control of the slide in some way. Uh, it's pretty hard to control at first, but you can definitely learn how to use it to skip everything. <laughs> so yeah, and that allows us to just not do that. So we do skip out on quite a few things there, but it's not the biggest sequence break, but definitely quite handy. But we need to do another one here to really like make progress because right now the checkpoint is still back at the wolf's cave. So if I were to die here, which could still happen depending on where this ends up. Oh, all of it. Yeah, now we got another checkpoint. Um, so that was like the actual big part of the skip. And now we can uh, proceed on. So yeah, as I said, we will come back there later, but then it will not be rainy, it will not be night time, so it looks quite different. It took me a while to realize that it was actually the same place that was already at early. So we are approaching only the next level, which is uh, another, well, it's not really a bunker, it's more of a base. First, some uh, cheeky checkpoint reloads again. Especially for the relics, you kind of want to, like, root your reloads that you always end up at the relic, because that, like, has the longest animation if you really want to fully let it play out. So being able to skip that is the most efficient. Also here, I need to stealth past these uh, enemies. Going well. Yeah, looks good. Just like my aim, probably. Yeah, good enough. So, in 100%, this is a lot dicier than in any percent because obviously now all of the guys at the bottom can catch up to me with me. And there are even more collectibles like past the next jump. So, uh, yeah, they can definitely gang up on me. So, also, I try to get rid of some of them if I could hit them. Okay, sometimes he follows you, but this time not. So yeah, there's another GPS cache here. Ow. 
So there is no health bar in this game. Instead, your like screen proceedingly turns more gray the more you get hit. So once it's like fully black and white, you know you're probably gonna die with the next hit. We kind of want to avoid that. And now we're inside this place. And, uh, yeah, proceed. The challenge in this place is to burn banners that are hanging on walls. So it's not shooting down things. Um, but for now we first want to light our torch here and then get rid of those two guys that just conveniently rolled in an explosive barrel in the spot. It's pretty nice. But there's another archer up there. And that's kind of not good. Yeah, that's really not good. So if you're in black and white, if you get near enemies, they might... Good. <laughs> nice reload <laughs> just before the enemy. Yeah, if you're in uh, full black and white and you're trying to run past enemies, they can like do a fatal finisher on you, which obviously kills you. That's uh, why we kind of want to avoid that. Uh, yeah, so these are the banners uh, we want to destroy. And this is the door we want to skip by hopefully at some point jumping over it. Thank you. Um, so if you were to do this the intended way, you would have to blow up that wall by like leaking some of the gas in the container and then setting it on fire. But now, like then there would be the guard here that is like kind of crushed by, this, by the rocks and he would have left his machine gun behind, but now it's just a machine gun laying around. Conveniently, before there's an ambush. Which is supposed to be a machine gun tutorial, but I just used the pistol anyways because I'm, I think, at least more accurate with it, as you can see. Fair enough. Just already triggering this guy because we need to light our torch again to destroy the remaining banners and collect all of the stuff that is left below there. Yeah, I'm good with aiming, for sure. And now we just need to backtrack a bit because there is actually one in the previous room. So if you were to do this the intended way and you would have had if we would have blown up the wall in the previous room, we would not have to do it would not have to do this backtracking, but yeah, we kind of skipped out on that. Because you couldn't have the torch from previously. No. Here. Like if you go through the like if you clip through the door you lose the uh, the torch. And if you like, we lost it because we climbed through the opening above the... Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so that's the last banner, and then it's just one more document, and then we're out of here. And you're supposed to go into this, like, crawl space, which takes quite a long time to get out of. We will try to not do that with a rather finicky skip. Yeah, this is called pipe skip, because it skips climbing through pipes. <laughs> you get Laura stuck in this position where the game doesn't really know where to put her, and then sometimes it pushes you in the <laughs> direction you want, which is there. That was nice. But it can also result in very weird things. So in this game there are uh, skill levels and points and stuff you can get, so we want to spend a certain number of points to unlock the second tier abilities for later on but we also got two somewhat important skills there one just lets us take more damage the other is called dirty tricks which allows you to throw sand at your opponents after a scramble move which we will not really use for the uh, intended purpose i guess later on so yeah enjoy my great aim again it actually worked what the heck so here I might still die because there's like an entire watchtower full of archers on the other side, as you can see maybe, from all the arrows running down on me. Stop, please. Oh my god. All good, yes. Luckily they're also right next to explosive barrels. <laughs> so yeah, just picking up this uh, document, then we can reload checkpoint to go back here. And now we want to go out of bounds to skip another... Uh, few waves of enemies. Luckily we can do that by vaulting over that small ridge there. And uh, 
we like could proceed all the way to the radio terrier, which is what we do with uh, in the any percent route. But there is are more collectibles to be collected in the uh, area behind this gate, which obviously not open. So there is supposed to be a smaller boss fight here, um, but we can still get inside by doing our trusted clipping method. And uh, yeah, now it's just a matter of collecting all the remaining stuff in here, which there isn't too much left, but there is also still one enemy that has spawned, which, like he's always there. He can technically uh, snipe us because we will uh, traverse some zip lines. And if you get hit while on a zip line, you automatically let, let go of them. So you kind of want to avoid that, but usually he's like stuck on a corner and can't really spot us. Like you can hear him yelling at us all the time. But Usually he's like, yeah, somewhere down there. I don't think right now. He's like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're there. <laughs> I'll find you. <laughs> don't run away. Uh, but yeah, we have much more important things to do. Such as uh, reading donations, because uh, the next two, no, one minute probably will be me holding the W key. So uh, please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for handing that over. It uh, looks like we do have some audio balance issues, so I'm going to do my best ASMR impression for the next few donations. Uh, we do have $25 here from Travels by Fire. Thank you very much, Travels by Fire. We've also got a $50 donation from Kavelish. That gets you in the running for a lot of our prizes, including our Nintendo Switch. Uh, we have three of those uh, ready to give away. Uh, and this donation says, Caddy, good luck on the run. Thanks for being so patient with all my questions in this game. Thank you very much, Kvelish, and thank you everyone for your donations today. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Still talk going about on? Her, uh, yeah, yes, please. Oh yeah, yeah I was we've just we've thinking definitely about got plenty to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have like uh, another minute, I would say. Okay, well, in that case, I can mention some of our uh, bids uh, and some of our donation incentives that we have coming up, including the Prey 2017 game the Glitch Exhibition, where Henny will showcase a few more glitches that didn't make it into the run. That one is at $463 out of 1,000, so we're about halfway there. We've also got um, a alternate outfit for Tormented Soul. That one, uh, giving Caroline the alternate outfit to wear. That one's also almost halfway at $262 out of 600. So, um, yeah, get those donations in. We've also got some uh, for Retro City Rampage and Resident Evil 7, the language choice and the color palette for those games. So, uh, yeah, if you're donating, make sure to select which incentives you want it to go toward. All right. In the meantime, we made it actually to the top of the tower, and we will now call for uh, help. And uh, then we will descend again, but uh, hopefully a bit uh, <laughs> less time. <laughs> yeah, it was a while since I did that, but uh, isn't it that if you turn it a bit too much <laughs> and uh, select it, you soft lock? I don't think or it's soft yeah. like you or just, or do. Oh yeah, you, it, if you you can press it and then still turn it, I think, and then it doesn't work anymore. You can turn it back. <laughs> so yeah, now we uh, need to kind of get the attention of the uh, rescue plane we just ordered. Uh, what better way than to just blow up some <laughs> fuel tanks? So yeah, we got the fire striker, which lets us light our torch anywhere. We don't need a fire source anymore. And uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, <laughs> <think, yeah. laughs> Might want to move. Yeah, the door opened. Oh, look, uh, good stretching exercise. And uh, yeah, so this game is pretty infamous Did for its low up the play. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'd like to know the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there will be a few sliding segments. It's uh, pretty well uh, known part of this game. Uh, this one is pretty easy. Um, later on there are some a bit, that are a bit more tricky because you get pushed around quite a bit. Like not all of the hits you can like take are one-shotting you but there are definitely some you want to make quite the detour you want. And another checkpoint reload incoming. Shout outs to Toka for <laughs> reminding us of <laughs> this existing. <laughs> So uh, that's the guy we wanted to <laughs> us to help, but I think we need to help him. Luckily, nothing goes wrong uh, wherever Lara goes. Seems fine. 
to me. Yeah. One could think that it's scripted, but it's just uh, slightly unlucky. <laughs> To make it to the uh, bottom here, the slope, we will hopefully get our next skywalk. Once I get past this guy, it's the pilot there, by the way. Yeah, he's uh, he staying there. <laughs> They're still the co-pilot, so maybe right. we can still <laughs> save still have someone. <laughs> <laughs> right, we still have a chance. So this skywalk is a bit trickier to first, like to get the first part, but uh, it's actually one of the cooler ones, I think. If it works out, it has a chance to. Yeah, don't go back there, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's actually a trigger for an event here you definitely want to avoid. Yeah, during uh, that skywalk, Kitty also hit a trigger to load the next area. Pretty important. Mm -hmm. And that was fine, don't worry about it. So, yeah, I didn't yeah it's all right. We also need uh, rope arrows to proceed past this point. Luckily, there is a built-in failsafe. Once you cross this river, you automatically get rope arrows. It's pretty handy. Also, for some reason, you see her climbing axe fly away from her there. But yeah, now we just have magically uh, rope arrows, which is very handy because this is where we need them. And now we actually like looped around and we're now on the next level of the uh, mountain village hub area that I already was in earlier. And we meet with uh, Roth again, the captain of our crew, and we uh, leave him again. I'm excited to see what's going to happen now. <laughs> Uh, I'll just do the skywalk. What are <laughs> you talking about? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sad. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> found something that might change the route. But it was like a couple hours ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this one is a bit tricky because you don't want to fall down there. You can die and go back. But yeah, so this is, wha maybe you remember this is where I did this first skywalk. Uh, but it was raining at night, so it looks a bit different. Um, yeah, so another challenge here is to light all the, I did not want to climb up, all the uh, statues. So some of the bigger areas have like two parallel challenges. This being one of them, you either, uh, like you have to both light the statues and steal bird eggs for reasons. Archaeology, I don't understand it. And now we're just making our way actually to our first tomb. So as I mentioned earlier, tombs are an uh, optional challenge in this game. But for Hundo, we obviously need to uh, do all of them. Like they're actually, they appear on the map screen as a uh, percentage thing you need to clear. And at the entrance of every tomb, there is like a segment of the path there where a lot of goes into an automatic slow walk. You will soon see what I'm talking about. And you might want to keep that in the back of your mind because uh, just as a visualization of how slow that slow walk is, it is rather slow. But later on, once we get another pretty important skill, we can actually cut out on most of that slow walking. But for now, we kind of have to uh, live with it. Um, the, the tombs are just basically very small puzzles, including this first one, obviously. And at the end, you always get like a bigger treasure chest that she opens uh, Zelda style. And um, yeah, you get some uh, upgrade material and also always like it unlocks the treasure map for that area. So you see where the rest of the collectibles are, you get some XP, stuff like that. But we're not really interested in like the upgrade part because despite it kind of like seems like it should be required um, there like weapon upgrades and skills are not tied to the percentage you get from clearing the game so we will not upgrade most of our weapons like we don't have to upgrade any of them but I will just get one specific upgrade because it's somewhat of an improvement of uh, quality of life so here you have to just time the uh, like using the cranks here or the valves to uh, Right, this uh, platform, which then uh, lets you climb over here, and that's basically already the key. But sometimes she gets stuck on this corner. Yes, yes, you don't have to demonstrate. Thank <laughs> you. Get it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's already it. Later tombs may or may not be more complex depending on how you solve them. 
You also might want to keep the animation here in the back of your mind because uh, as you can see it's also rather lengthy and we don't get a checkpoint until like after we finish it or do we later on, we will see. But yeah, that was the first uh, tomb, as you can see, we get some upgrade materials and also some XP. So XP is actually somewhat wanted at the start of the run. As I said, we want to unlock a certain number of skills, doesn't really matter which ones. Just want to unlock, I think, uh, seven skills first, then we unlock uh, tier two abilities to unlock with uh, skill points and we just want one very specific one which will uh, give us a new movement option and that's the one that will then uh, take over as fastest uh, way to move but that's not until a bit later in the run so uh, yeah and of course uh, slow walk takes over again on the our way back out of the tomb and just a few more things to collect before we uh, go on to the next part um, but don't worry we'll be back again in mountain village uh, just a bit later on. So as I said, we will pass through it quite a few times. Uh, here we just drop down and hope to animation cancel. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. If you you would usually get a hard fall there because it's quite the distance you drop down. But if you like land just close enough to the ledge, she also falls down that ledge and it resets the uh, height from where the hard fall would occur. And uh, yeah, just collecting some more stuff. While I do that, I think we can. Read another donation. Okay, thank you very much for that handoff. Uh, looks like we've got fifteen dollars here from Anonymous. Thank you very much, Anonymous, for your fifteen dollar donation. Uh, and just to remind everybody, uh, the reason we're all here today uh, is the uh, is Alzheimer's Fund in the foundation. It's a Swedish fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. And their aim and purpose is to increase fundraising to benefit. Uh, scientific research in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. So just remember uh, that all your donations are going to this very great cause, and so we hope to see a lot more of it. We're at about 10,000 right now, um, about halfway between 10,000 and 11,000. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can't get to 11,000 before the end of the run. It's only a couple hundred bucks away. So thank you very much, everyone, for your donation so far. This is like the best timing ever because now the Skywalker. <laughs> So yeah, we, lo we can maybe you could see the parachute there. Yeah, that's the co-pilot location that we kind of want to get to. And usually you're supposed to like uh, use uh, another rope arrow to cross that gap, and then uh, a storm occurs, and you kind of have to do some QTEs. But uh, we can also just not do that. And this is uh, dirty tricks. So you saw Lara uh, throw a handful of sand there, and you may notice that uh, she's not walking really. She's more like sliding. So like this, I think, is called ice skating. So right now it just like, is a slightly faster way than uh, the slow walk we would usually get here. Because um, during walkie-talkies like this, you also get a slower uh, movement speed. So that cut out a bit of time, but that's not the main reason why we really got uh, Dirty Tricks. That is to be revealed a bit later on. And uh, Oh, there is the co-pilot, nice. Oh, he's still alive. Yeah, looks good. For now. <laughs> Looks very alive. Ah, oh, too bad. What happened? Uh, Door warning, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're back to the start because Lara is uh, hanging from the ceiling again. Just the other way around this time. Hmm. What does Lara do when she has her hands tied up? I won. <laughs> no precedent. Just have them not be tied up. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't fall damage cancel. Uh, so yeah, now we're in the monastery. Uh, we're not the first ones to be here, really. Um, so there are no collectibles as such in this area because it will also become inaccessible later on. But you can actually lock yourself out of 100% because there is a campfire in this area that you cannot go back to. But it does appear on the uh, map screen and you have to get it for 100%. There is a skip we do in any percent that would actually also bypass that campfire. So we can't use that skip since we need to get the, the campfire. However, there will still be some skipping going on, hopefully. Um, but before we do that, we make our way down here and we will actually get a uh, fourth and final weapon type. 
which will be the shotgun. It's a very potent uh, weapon for close quarters, obviously. But it's also a required weapon for uh, game progress because it allows us to destroy like uh, barriers like that. You could see there, yeah, this one. Also, this might be a magical shotgun because it has some cool tricks in store, like turning invisible. So yeah, now in any percent we would go back and like take a small detour to then just climb over the entire level on the ceiling, but we can't do that. Um, also, this is the infamous cutscene where Lara says she hates tombs, which is good as a Tomb Raider, but we'll not look at that. Instead, we will uh, first get rid of these guys. Well, if I could shoot, that would be nice. Yes. And the not miss, that would also be nice. So if you shoot most enemies in mid-air, or while they're like dropping down like this, shotgun is always a one-hit, which is nice. And behind this crawl space is the uh, campfire we want. But it's will usually skip, now we got it. You are supposed to go like further down that way, but uh, we will not do that. Instead we will enable V-Sync, which caps our frame rate at 60 FPS, because that makes certain clips easier, and this is one of those. But this is still a rather tricky one to get sometimes. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I got it almost. <laughs> Next try. I'm sure it was just the vases that were in the way. See, I told you. So uh, yeah, now we just make our way to the uh, actual main part of the monastery. Um, yeah, usually there would be like a lot of uh, climbing here involved that I don't want to do. That's why we skip it. Um, but we have to do this uh, puzzle here in the final part of the monastery because like the level transition is tied to it so there's no real way around this but you can actually soft lock yourself I definitely didn't just jinx myself but at yeah, the pendulum here uh, you pull with your rope arrows to smash into the pillars on the other side of the hall well, well not the other side but yeah, the ones you can clearly see are not in a very stable uh, condition and you have to like operate these valves to open or close the uh, windows to let wind in, which then moves the pendulum. And once we destroy this pillar, a uh, fight will trigger, which we'll take care of, and then I hopefully will remember to disable V-Sync again. Because we might want to have some more frames in the future. Again, shooting enemies in mid-air, uh, one shot usually. But there are armored enemies like that guy that you have to first get yeah, like the arm rid of the armor. So yeah, here I uh, get rid of these thing and checkpoint reload because I got it after the fight. I spawn back here, and uh, there might be an audio warning coming in. I'm not sure if this PC is as cursed as mine, uh, but sometimes the audio balance for the next part doesn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah. And that is for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. I have heard some people do not suffer from that. Okay. We'll see. Maybe it's because they enjoy it. <laughs> like it. They suffer from it. Yeah, no. It's, it's also <coughs> <not> somewhat cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fine to me. I would also be pretty loud in that uh, situation. <laughs> Probably. But now it fixes itself, so all is good. And yeah, so this is um, another thing for the shotgun. So you might think you could just like also soft lock yourself by having like zero shotgun ammo, but you always have like unlimited shotgun ammo in, in those kind of passages to prevent that. Uh, yeah, so now we're actually back in Mountain Village again, but on yet another level. Um, but it kind of will loop to the very bottom where we first come back from like the Russian capture part. But we'll not like actually go back to that part, we'll just proceed further on. But yeah, that would be like the entirety of Mountain Village pretty much. We will come back at the end once we have all the equipment. So there are three guys down there. Once we kill them, we get a checkpoint that is all the way down there. Well, I, what is happening to that base? Uh, what is happening to my aim as well? 
pretty good. Flawless. Wait, one of them is still alive. Isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> this music doesn't play normally. <laughs> yeah, now I got the checkpoint. Yeah, so if I yeah, collect that GPS cache and load checkpoint, I go all the way back down here. Usually that uh, passageway there into the hut is also blocked by a barrier you would have to shoot off with the uh, shotgun. But if you drew out the checkpoint, it doesn't uh, exist anymore. So we save one shotgun uh, ammo. Then just quickly climb up here for another document and then checkpoint reload to go back downstairs. And then we're making our way to the uh, next slidey part. Not so stealthy, <laughs> sadly. Yeah, so you kind of only... You don't want that to happen, actually. You only have to... I said you want to take care of these three guys here. Where is the third one? Oh, there is the third one. Yeah. Because they can actually really harm you when you get into this uh, stream here. But uh, the other guys just turn around and leave you in peace. It's very kind of them. I'm sure there's nothing else uh, that's dangerous here. And uh, yeah, this is probably the most infamous slide there is in the game. Not only because like you get pushed around like crazy, but be also because the uh, death animations here can be rather uh, gruesome, so I hope I can avoid them. Else you have been warned. Yeah. Looks okay so far. I'm getting motion sick. Yeah, fine, it's over now. There's nothing oh more yeah. happening like that. Oh, it would be terrible. <laughs> Oops. Well. well, at least nothing can happen now. We have a parachute. Yeah, there's no gruesome deaths no, here. No, absolutely so. not. that I've seen them anyway. <laughs> right. That would be terrible. Oh no, I messed up. No. Yeah, so, so normally you would use a parachute to land safely, <laughs> but Clara decides to <laughs> <laughs> land, but <Don't> uh, <laughs> <laughs> questionable safety. Land on the soft trees <laughs> instead. Uh, yeah, so this is the next bigger hub area. It's uh, Shanty Town, which we will also re revisit later, but only for one tomb. So we will actually do like 93%, I think, of all the collectibles in one go. But that go is a bit long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this next skip is what we uh, want to disable VSync for again. So you're usually supposed to go to that uh, helicopter there in the background where we would get fire arrows. But uh, we can also just not do that, hopefully. So this clip is very similar to the one we did uh, in the forest at the start, where I had to jump off the ledge to fuse back the body with the camera. But luckily there is just a ledge right on top of that uh, roof, which has the same effect. So as soon as I stepped onto that ledge, I got full control of Lara again. And now we'll just make our way into this very well-loaded area. And after um, getting ambushed here, I will checkpoint reload, because otherwise uh, Lara will still be hurt, and that's not good. So you may s have seen there like the screen turning gray and whatnot, because she's in a hurt state, but reloading fixes that. So now I have full mobility and I'm still trapped, uh, especially if I can't clip into this. And there we go. So now that we clipped through the door and uh, we magically got fire arrows, which was very handy because we need them here. So the one of the challenges in Shantytown is to like destroy these effigies. So what you first have to do is burn the cloth that covers them and then you tear them down with rope arrows. Like that. The second challenge here will be uh, to just destroy alarms, which are just like in a small machines. There are only four of them, so hopefully I will not miss those. But yeah, um, it's a pretty big area. It's probably not the biggest, like just in terms of size. I assume the beach is bigger, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, this will take a bit because yeah, things are somewhat scattered. 
But in the meantime, we've actually collected quite a nice amount of XP or yeah, experience, um, which will allow us, once we finish the tomb that is on the bottom level here, to uh, get the desired uh, number of skill points to uh, ascend to second tier abilities. And then we can learn Climber's Agility, which uh, is a somewhat infamous skill. And I heard it's not the only way to get it. Uh, like, there's some alternative I wasn't, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was the one that <laughs> never heard it the is. name before. <laughs> yeah. But there is a like a 30 euro cent DLC <laughs> <laughs> that also gives you that skill. That seems fast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of lame. <laughs> and uh, disliked by the community present here. <laughs> <laughs> the assembled uh, tier 2013 community here. Yeah, so this is actually the start of Shantytown again. Also took me a while to realize you loop around here. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Just some stretching exercise. Yeah, so now just a few more um, documents slash GPS caches slash relics, and then I go into the next two. Uh, and then once I'm done with that tomb, there is actually a campfire in that tomb. There is one in every, one, in every tomb. And there we'll uh, actually sit down and level up, and also upgrade the shotgun to give it a higher rate of fire. Again, as I said earlier, it's not required in any way, but it's just make makes certain fights way easier, especially later on. So that was the uh, entrance to the tomb. And again, take note of the slow walk. It's uh, a pretty slow walk. Hopefully not for too much longer anymore. But yeah, obviously once you, like there are certain passages which we even can't skip with that new skill once we get it because Laura crouches down. And uh, yeah, just have to take those. Do you think we've got a little bit of time to uh, talk about some of the prizes available today? Absolutely. Just uh, first, uh, there's just a small puzzle here. It's kind of like just a weighing down puzzle, weigh down the platform, jump onto it and stuff. It's very self-explanatory, but yeah, please go ahead. Okay, yeah, it looks like we've got some better things to spend our money on than buying some of these skills. Uh, it looks like we've got, uh, if you donate a minimum of $10, we do have a Legend of Zelda keychain set. A lot of really cool keychains in this one. I see a... Zora Sapphire, Goron Ruby, Heart Container, uh, Boss Key. Uh, we've also got a 6-inch Kirby plush. We don't have the uh, mouthful mode just yet, but <laughs> just the standard regular Kirby. Uh, and for $10 as well, the Art Prince, uh, Bonfire, Jin, and the Ashen one uh, from Dark Souls, uh, from different FromSoft games, uh, Dark Souls inspired and Sekiro inspired. For $15 minimum donation, and that's collective throughout the entire marathon. Uh, we also have the Undertale art book. Uh, that's 15 bucks. 228 full color pages showing Undertale from the very first concept sketches to end of development. Also a metal Doom Slayer poster and a video game world map poster. $15. Uh, also the View Sonic Elite um, Elite Gaming Monitor. Uh, the XG240R estimated value 350 but you have a chance to win it with a minimum donation of $40. So while you're doing some good, you can also have a chance to get that. $10 more gets you in the running for a Nintendo Switch. There are three winners for that. Uh, $50, estimated value $400. And then also we have for our retro fans, we have a Retro Tink 5X Pro with S-Cart adapter. There's going to be three winners for that as well. It's a plug-and-play upscaler, allowing any retro console to be played lag-free on a flat-screen monitor or TV. And our grand prize, for $100, we do have a PlayStation 5, the disc version. Uh, that's estimated value of 600 could be yours for a minimum donation of 100 So if you get $100 in throughout the course of the marathon, that can be $10, $5 donations or $10, $10 donations, $25 donations, however you want to split it up. Uh, math is not my strong suit. So let's just uh, get the $100 in throughout the course and we can get uh, your chances into win a PlayStation. So um, yeah, good luck with that, everyone. And I'll pass it back. Thank you very much. So yeah, you may have noticed Lara sometimes moves a bit differently now. So Climber's Agility allows you to roll after a jump. So now instead of first scrambling and then jumping like that, we will most of the times now do a jump followed by a roll. Since the roll is, gives you quite a nice forward boost, it's actually the fastest way of movement. Plus it also actually enables or makes a lot of uh, clipping skips easier. So that's a nice uh, addition on top of that. 
So this jump is somewhat cursed because there is a big death plane <laughs> to the left, but uh, luckily I avoided it. Um, so yeah, that allows us to go into this part of uh, Shantytown early. Um, you're supposed to climb that tower you can see there in the background and uh, try to rescue another one of your crewmates, which may or may not work out, but we'll never know. In the meantime, um, here starts the second challenge. Like, this is the one we already know, the effigies, but this is these are the alarms. Uh, so this one is just nicely situated because you can first uh, shoot the effigy, which then starts to burn because it takes a while to burn down, and while that happens you can take down the alarm. And then once the effigy is ready, you can just tear it down. And just making our way to the top of Shantytown, because we kind of want to ride the gondola across the gap and still kind of trigger that event where we need to help our crewmate, because that's where the story continues. In any percent, we would absolutely not do that, because that's where the biggest skip in the game is. But uh, sadly, that skips a part where there are quite a few collectibles, so that's not really an option. So instead, we're just making our way... Well, we got some visitors, apparently. We need to take care of those. But first, let me collect this. Then there should be an archer up here, if I can find him. Yes. There's this shotgun guy that has armor, so we can first get rid of that. And then we can take this sneaky jump over here to get down here early. Or faster, I guess. And another alarm here. We can disable. So we're somewhat on a cycle here, because we want to catch, uh, as I said, a gondola at the top, which, yeah, has obviously separate gondola carts. But uh, yeah, as long as you get there, there's not really much can go wrong, apart from missing a collectible and not noticing it until later. And if I hadn't shot that archer in that weird position, just after I collected the GPS cache, then there would be an enemy right behind this uh, wall, which can be spooky at times. This time I remembered to shoot the archer. I think it wasn't even an archer, I think he had a machine gun, whatever. That guy. Mean guy. <laughs> One of those. So this is the gondola we want to take. Looks nice. And we try to finish up the <coughs> both of the challenges here. So this is like the last alarm, hopefully. Okay, good. And there is the fifth effigy also on the opposite like wall. But sometimes there's just a gondola card that's so, yeah. Would have been nice to catch that one, but it was already out of reach. So now we have time to get rid of this one. There is a backup effigy you can actually burn later on. So there are actually six in total, but you only need five, which is interesting. I think it's, you can actually see it here in the, yeah, up there. So it's not 100%. It is. It's not 101%. <laughs> So yeah, this is the event I was talking about earlier. So that's uh, the helmsman of the ship that kind of doesn't exist anymore. And uh, we kind of need to save him, I guess. And there's this battle that we uh, certainly will fight intended way. Looks fine. What are you doing? <laughs> Just taunting them. Yeah, looks good to me. Hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. With the nice side effect that our crewmate is actually still alive and uh, hovering in midair over there. <laughs> and he will also be rather resistant to uh, arrows to his face. Because, like, the angle they fire at you here. Just so it turns out to be also hitting him. <laughs> Pretty good. So this uh, seems to be quite the bad situation, but luckily uh, Broth uh, turns out to be an expert marksman. So he's uh, now helping us with his uh, sniper support. And uh, maybe uh, you remember the uh, dirty tricks skill we used earlier to throw sand. 
could come in handy here to demonstrate. Rescue helicopter, you say? Do they fly like this? Uh, yeah. oh. I've just become a helicopter myself. So yeah, um, walkie-talkies, if you use dirty tricks at the start when they like pick up their walkie-talkies, Lara starts an air walk. It's very convenient. What is not so convenient is that it is actually tied to the duration of the conversation. So as soon as the conversation ends, you just drop down. In this case, we didn't skip like really all that much. It's just we would have had to wait on the other side of the bridge until the conversation is over before we could cross it. But so we, uh, this way we could just cross it while they were already talking. Later on, there will be a much larger skip that yeah is very reliant on the length of the conversation, which actually is the reason why certain languages. The dialogues are just so fast you cannot even make that skip. <laughs> and English is technically the slowest language because the conversation are the longest, but because of that we get the longest airwalk, so it's the fastest language. Pretty good uh, <laughs> conundrum. You had like setups for other languages, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't get as far, so uh, <laughs> you have to change your setup. So now we have to wait until uh, Roth gets rid of these guys. If you like move while they're not dead, they uh, make you dead. And with this we're making our way into the <coughs> geothermal caverns. So again, in any percent, the next three levels would like be skipped altogether because we would just get to the very top of Shantitan, which we now have to loop all the way around to. This looks precarious. Getting some deja vu from this. <laughs> So there's some very interesting animation happening here, which is probably because of our uh, frame rate. Uh, you might experience this soon. Lara all of a sudden speeds up quite uh, interestingly here in the water, but then she just <laughs> takes a dive for five seconds while having her torch still be on fire. So all of the time gained by uh, speeding up is lost again. But uh, we haven't talked about that so far, so uh, this game is very frame rate dependent, like lo lots of the glitches and skips are. So the sweet spot most people like found is around 150 to 160 frames. It's basically where like clips are still doable and where skywalks are actually nice to do. If you like go a lot lower, skips become like clips become easier, which is why I also enabled VSync earlier to do that clip. But skywalks become a lot less doable or basically impossible and it's the other way around so if you increase the frame rate then those clips get like almost impossible to do so yeah you have to find kind of a sweet spot also very accurate uh, observation by Lara that that was flammable after the fact probably <laughs> looks like Uh, so yeah, unsurprisingly, we got captured yet again. So did that guy. Um, yeah, this uh, area is basically infested with cannibals, as it happens. And it's also home to a few collectibles. <laughs> and flammable gas. So the challenge here is to uh, get rid of these sacks that are hanging from oh nice i actually got one that's somewhat rare like the explosion i caused there burned one of the sacks that were already hanging from the ceiling usually i would have to shoot it later on but now it already did that by itself i'm out of arrows that's uh, unfortunate <laughs> uh how do i do this <laughs> guess i melee <laughs> please drop arrows <laughs> you did not drop arrows how do i get arrows uh, this is fine do i actually have to do it? <laughs> 
<laughs> wrong game, but thank you. <laughs> I think there are some over here, yes. Okay. All good, yes. Just need to go all the way back. <laughs> I think I missed the pickup. All yeah. uh, oh right, that one, yeah. There would be one there, that's the one I mentioned. Uh, but that got rid by itself, but this one has not burned. Yes, did that count? No, okay. Rip another arrow. Okay, so now I don't have to go there, hopefully. So here is an example of a nice clip with the roll. Yeah, like that. You don't even have to like use any like shenanigans with like weapons and turning around and whatnot. You can just straight roll through si thin gates and walls like that. Sometimes you get an alarm here, it's fine. You just have to get rid of these. I did not mean to open the map, thank you. <laughs> also have to get rid of that, but I uh, yeah, just get rid of these guys without them killing you, preferably. Yes. Uh, turns out if you aim, you are not crouched. Yeah, because sometimes you also like can just not get that alarm, which makes things considerably easier. But as you can see, it's not too much of a time loss. Again, come on. I learned. So that's that. Uh, so we're basically at the halfway point of geothermal caverns here because this is also where the uh, base camp is, which, so not all. Um, Campfires can be teleported to, there are like more important ones, which are called base camps, so this is the one for this area, which are the ones we could use in case we forgot something. We will learn more of later if that happens. But uh, with that crate now there we can proceed. And also there's another sack I need to set on fire here. And here we uh, want to stealth, so Scrambling is considered a stealthy action, rolling is not, so you want to make sure to not roll or else you get another encounter here. And uh, yeah, just making our way further up the caverns, there is another set here and then uh, just one left. At the very top there is also uh, a group of enemies waiting for us, kind of, so one of their uh, scouts we can get rid of. Here. Actually, I'm really low on arrows, that's not cool. <laughs> Almost like I forgot to pick up. Anyways, can't get ambushed if you ambush them. Nice. <laughs> Knockback. Good cover. So that was that uh, encounter. Yeah, it can go really wrong depending on how the enemies move, but that was actually very nicely done, if I might say so myself. And uh, that's almost the last pickup here, just one more GPS cache, and then we're good to go to the next area. Just there were arrows right there. Well, okay, that's a good point. <laughs> there are also arrows oh. Oh, here, <laughs> conveniently laying around. But thank you for the reminder. I already forgot again. <laughs> Because I usually never have troubles with that, because I actually pick up stuff, but I guess not. You set everything on fire. <laughs> yeah? Always the solution. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just making our way through that tunnel. And now we checkpoint reload to gain control faster again. Just need to clear out these guys. And there's one more over there that just shoots the wall, okay. About as good as aim as I have. And then we actually see the rest of our crew. They're very happy to see us again, and now we should help them, but we will just not. Because we can just move on by ourselves. So with the uh, melee attack, we can actually climb up certain walls. And turns out this part of the wall is actually skywalkable off, so we can clip to the top grab this ledge and then we leave our friends behind but apparently they make it out anyways according to the radio so whatever happened there all right 
and that brings us to Solari Fortress. So this area has no pickups, it will become unavailable later on. But you do get a weapon upgrade, which is actually required for exactly one collectible, to my knowledge, so far. But even if we could uh, like get that um, collectible without the grenade launcher, we still would need to go through here, because as I said earlier, Going through this area is the only way to gain access to um, one of the later areas with collectibles, so far, at least. But would obviously be very nice if we could skip all of this, because, yeah, we have a skip for it that we're using any percent, but... Not usable so far in Hundo. So this is just, like, a longer gauntlet, basically, of getting to the end and sprinkled in some fights that will definitely go well with my kind of aim at the... 4.30 a.m. or whatever it is. Let's see. <laughs> Can you confirm what is the time? 4.34. Damn. Let and I am definitely awake. <laughs> well, that, that makes one of us. That's good. Are you enjoying your cup of water? <laughs> yes. However, I have it run out of it's water. Empty. <laughs> uh, any finders? Where is he? The heck? I found a donation here. Uh, I can bring that for you guys. Uh, sure. Everything is under control here. I totally okay, know okay. that. Yep. <laughs> Looks like we've got a $60 donation here from Limi saying, Hey, Caddy, I hear Laura's friends are stuck in a cage. I hope you won't leave them hanging. That would be a grim fate. Wish I was there with you. Fingers crossed. It works out in the summer. Good luck with the rest of the run. And don't forget, we've got a little back seating here. Don't forget that Alt F4 makes Laura go faster. Thank you for the reminder, Limi. Thank you very much. Thank you for that <laughs> absolutely amazing pun that uh, did not hurt in the least. Just like that reload. Yeah, so with those two guys, we get another checkpoint, which is the end of the fight. So now we reload checkpoint. We're already at the exit and make our way out of the first part of the fortress into the open area. Ish. Just want to get rid of machine gun guys because, as you can see, uh, even with the health upgrade skill, uh, Lara is still pretty squishy. Yeah, don't worry about these guys, they also just want to get out. <laughs> we have a common goal, it's all good. And uh, yeah, this is the enemy that gives us the grenade launcher. Well, he doesn't give it to us, but now we have it, because uh, don't, do it, don't question it. So yeah, obviously it's a useful weapon but we will use it uh, in other ways not the first time for this game also don't worry about these guys they're just uh, distracted so here you definitely want to use it because those are two armored guys with uh, machine guns that's not very healthy to just climb up there So uh, story-wise, uh, oh right, I'm supposed to clear this out without getting knocked back, preferably, but now it's too late. Yeah, story-wise, one of our uh, friends from the crew turns out to be like the uh, they like the evil cult that's on this island wants to use her to uh, reawaken the goddess that rules over this island. So interesting goal that we definitely don't want to uh, make not exist. So here's another clip uh, where we actually use the melee attack to the side to gain some more uh, space to break free because uh, you may have seen there like the game tried to pull me back inbounds but if you like hit certain collision there you can actually break free from that pull and then you're free to go and skip most of this part. Now we can still drop back inbounds in the bad place depending on if Laura decides to actually stand on this thing or not. Okay good. 
Like if you drop down the left side, you have to take a small detour. It's not like too bad. Also get used to the grenade launcher prompt on the right, it will stay there for a while. All good. Game just wants to make sure I know how to use it. And from now on it's pretty much just uh, run away or run to the top. Like there's no more real like fights or anything. Just pure like movement slash climbing. Part, hopefully. But first, like here, there's another uh, cutscene. So here, the guy we saw at the very start at the campfire uh, would uh, appear and out himself as the l leader of the evil cult, which nobody expected. But we will just not watch that cutscene by going to the main menu and uh, loading back in. And all of a sudden, everything is exploding. Now it's Uncharted 2. <laughs> <laughs> but without the train. Maybe that's why I thought this was the end of the game. <laughs> but turns out there is more. So that's a... Uh, a nice rescue helicopter we got there would be bad if something uh, bad would happen to you. She tried. <laughs> Very convincing. And that's pretty much Solari Fortress. Um, like we just need to do this final part, and then uh, we're good to go. And that will, after a cutscene, bring us to the uh, uh, what is it called the Mountain Forest, right? which is the area with the collect Clara. Can you please climb to the top before it collapses? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's the area. Oh dear, oh dear, this is yeah, not a close call at all. Uh, yeah, it's the the area we can only access this way that I was talking about earlier. Now it's Mirror's Edge. <laughs> it's the end of Mirror's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> also very good grab on her arm there. <laughs> Just use telekinesis. Um, but yeah, so there are some cutscenes in this game you somehow cannot skip. <laughs> I guess they're very crucial to the plot. Uh, but yeah, usually you can skip most of the cutscenes in this game. Um, this is not one of them. Um, the longer the reboot games went on, the less cutscenes you could skip. But uh, yeah, this one we kind of have to watch. So if there is anything else to talk about, then we can go straight ahead before I try to ruin the rest of my voice. <laughs> So very convincing. Still can't skip. <laughs> nice, yes. nice refreshing break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess that helicopter didn't make it, and uh, maybe. Neither did Roth, but we will never find out because we just skipped the cutscene. But somehow we have his gun now. I guess uh, something happened. Uh, I don't think he needs it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice gift. We don't have to upgrade ours. But yeah, this is the mountain, f uh, yeah, mountain forest. So special challenge here is to collect mushrooms of some kind. I don't know. It's not elaborated upon. 
And uh, yeah, this is also now we'll have the first tune that we will also be able to skip the uh, cutscene, the treasure chest at the end. Because as you may have uh, noticed, we picked up the grenade launcher. And uh, turns out we cannot just uh, use it to attack enemies. But if Lara gets uh, hit by a grenade explosion, she gets like knocked off the treasure chests, which like automatically finishes the animation for you and gives you the checkpoint. So you can skip pretty much all of that, which is quite handy. And actually the only use outside of uh, that one uh, collectible we need the uh, grenade launcher for. And it looks fun. <laughs> Hopefully. Like you can get very differing results like in magnitude. There's some possibilities of some pretty good launches. And that's not a bow, but nice try. It did not get set on fire despite me trying my best, so let's try again. Thank you. So yeah, uh, grenade launcher and then you do this and you do this and then you can reload checkpoint here. It was not very exciting. But you can actually lock yourself out of 100% with these as well because if you reload checkpoint like very very br like shortly after you get knocked off the the treasure chest it like the treasure chest counts as open but you don't get credit for completing the tomb so you cannot com recomplete the tomb because it's tied to opening the treasure chest so you will not get that one ever again so i make sure especially for this run to wait a bit after the explosion because that would be not very cool to get screwed because of that And uh, that's another door we can just clip through, no worries. <laughs> and now we've actually looped all the way around to the top of Shantytown. So this, we skip all of this, like, since we left Shantytown in 90%. So you can tell how big of a skip it is. We also gained, like, 50... Collectibles. <laughs> True. So yeah, another slow walk we sadly cannot accelerate. But I swear it will be possible at some point. So yeah, this like this cave entrance is where we actually skywalk to from the bottom of Shanty Town in any percent, so it skips everything. And uh, next is where the dirty tricks come into play again. So there's another walkie-talkie here, and this is another one just basically for demonstration purposes. So this one doesn't save any time, because we're making our way to another gondola. You can see in the distance there. And uh, yeah, we just have to wait for a free gondola card. This doesn't actually save any time there. But yeah, just as a refresher, if we use dirty tricks, which is the sand throwing skill at the start of uh, the walkie-talkie, um, you get the ice skating animation, and that lets you do an airwalk, but it will come in very, very handy very, very soon. And also that's the backup effigy there in the background I was talking about earlier. If you're like short on one, you can still get the completion there without having to backtrack. And since I have to wait for the gondola card, I can also pick up some ammo here. And then I will uh, kick in V-Sync again, but not for a clip this time. Just waiting for the checkpoint so I can actually combine setting VSync on to reload checkpoint. Hey. Did that save it now or did it not? It didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was not what I would usually do. You could tell by the menu not being slow. Exactly. <laughs> maybe try to actually do dirty tricks but yeah so right at the start of this checkpoint there is a conversation on the walkie-talkie but also at the very start we can get a dirty tricks and uh, that allows us to break out from the gondola I need to tell you something. 
usually you would have to just write it down all the way. Like there's not really much to do there because all of it is walkie-talkie segment. But uh, instead we can break free and make our way over here. And this is what I mentioned earlier where the language selection actually comes into play. So with English we can actually make it the furthest all the way uh, to that like horizontal beam. Most languages would be over by now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a nice position. Yeah, sure. You need to have uh, these and calm here, so you don't die from the fall. Exactly. Higher frame rates will lead to more <laughs> height, <laughs> <laughs> more death. Yeah. So then we can disable VSync again because it's not a checkpoint reload, and this area we also uh, hopefully can uh, take some uh, liberties with completion. Uh, that's not how I wanted to do it, though. I'm probably dead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, depending on enemy behavior, there's really not too much you can do. But, uh, let's try again. Luckily, just a checkpoint here at the start. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, so we can uh, jump around that, like, hole there to make it behind the level and that allows you to clip through the floor and grab that bar there so usually the level is supposed to turn around and that's like the final part of the level but the trigger is just associated with the bar so whenever you grab it the level just ends it's pretty nice and now we make our way to the third and last hub area also the largest one, I would estimate. It's the beach. Um, we will also reunite with the remainder of our crew. And uh, there are also two challenges in this area. One is uh, to destroy these uh, like uh, cairns they're called. The other is to destroy mines in the water, but more on that later. We'll actually only very briefly be here for now. We'll take a shortcut to uh, another campfire further ahead, which makes fast traveling way more convenient later on. But first there's a collectible I need to get on top of the rock formation to the right, so I need this uh, boy to reach it. And the physics are sometimes not very reliable, but this looks fine to me. Climbing can also be. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> very <laughs> unreliable. <laughs> Please! <What? laughs> Hello? Yeah? No? No? Laura? Uh, yes. There we go. No. <laughs> and uh, then we use this wall to get another skywalk. But this one is even trickier than the others because Laura turns invisible halfway through. And uh, there are a lot of like holes in the collision here that you kind of want to avoid, which is difficult if you can't see Laura. <laughs> yeah, the collision doesn't also doesn't match the terrain, so you have to kind of know where the wall is. Yeah, especially that uh, the end there. Yeah. Give that another go. Yeah, at the end, there's only a very small section where you have collision. That's considerably less speedy. This seems like one of my skywalks. <laughs> <laughs> this looks fine. Then you can land on top here, which actually makes loading the next area easier because this area is not loaded, but we need it. So now we can just uh, make our way on top of this bunker and quickly jump off that ledge and land back on and now it's loaded. If you land at the bottom you would have to like clip through a wall which is can be very annoying. So this is the collectible I mentioned earlier, we need to blade the nade launcher 4 so that it's behind two of those. I feel like, like there should be a way to get to it, like maybe climbing through like the part there to the left. but. Uh, Oh well. So again, uh, checkpoint reload brings us to the bottom. 
And uh, now we're in the uh, research bunker. Just one of the last areas of the game. But uh, we will not fully clear it now. We are basically just here to activate the campfire there on the left because it's one of the base camps so we can teleport back here later on. But since there are some like totems here we need to destroy anyways, uh, this one is always a bit difficult to spot for me. We just clear these out, take the document and now we leave to the beach again. Because luckily it actually gave us the beach campfire earlier despite us not really going down to the beach. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty big area. I will make my way through. Uh, that's actually an interesting route I'm taking because that's not how I usually do it. Uh, nice reroute <laughs> on the fly. There we go. Uh, again, another clip here just through that wall. So we don't need to open it. And it's pretty tricky to actually clip the other way. So you can just as well do a checkpoint reload there. Also skips the bit of uh, the document collecting animation. And on we go. So now we want to go into this uh, shipwreck you can see in the middle left part of the screen. To collect an upgrade for our bow, which is very necessary. Whatever that means. No idea. <laughs> I mean, uh, can you skip it in this category? I'm actually not sure because you need to place a lot more ropes yeah. walls. I think in this category actually it's still... Until you also find skips for that. <laughs> yeah, in any percent you can technically skip the bow, but it's insanely difficult to do so. There's a couple of spots where you need to uh, climb over using the rope arrow. And uh, yeah, there's four of them, and two of them are pretty easy, and then the third one is to be harder, and then the fourth one is really hard. <laughs> I made it my mission to <laughs> find skips for all of them. <laughs> and sadly you succeeded. <laughs> Wait, I didn't kill him? Okay. Well then I should not checkpoint reload. Oh, he spawned. Well, whatever. Then. Yeah, you get a checkpoint after you clear out this group of enemies. If you're fast enough, that third guy doesn't spawn. Oh well. Uh, here we checkpoint reload so we don't have to walk through the water, it's very slow, instead we just spawn at the beach. Can collect some more stuff. Preferably also hit the mines. And yeah, once we approach the campfire here we automatically get the recurve bow, or the composite bow, I'm never sure which upgrade it is. Which allows us to shoot rope arrows into like rocky walls, which then like, creates a zip line we can uh, traverse. But first, some more stuff to collect here on the back side. But yeah, we'll soon see that in action. What do you even collect here? I never get it. <laughs> you don't collect anything, you actually destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs something. <laughs> what did she grab? <laughs> I don't know. Like a rock. <laughs> archaeology I don't understand maybe she just smooths it out a bit <laughs> sure gives it a path <laughs> so yeah we need to make our way all the way up there and uh, we can only do that with the new rope arrows into uh, that's not the way Rope arrows into the rocky walls, like so. And these you actually want to angle somewhat low, which is a bit counterintuitive, but if you angle them low you get that sliding animation, which is very fast. If you like angle them at, like not the right angle, she would just like normally climb down, which is a lot slower. And now we're making our way to the endurance, which is Wa or was our ship no, that we no shipwrecked with here because we need to collect to tools to repair the boat that we want to use to escape this place and uh, one of our friends has gone uh, ahead and tried to get them by himself 
Let's see how that worked out. Damn, bird not spinning around. Uh, that's not what I want. No. <laughs> so these are like just bigger treasure chests that give you that give you um, salvage, so crafting materials basically. But uh, don't need those, as I said. Like upgrades are not part of the percentage for map clearing. And uh, yeah, just some more mines. Once we shoot the next one, it actually alerts the two guys that are on the watchtower to the left. Yeah, if I could hit them, it would also help. Yeah, so you have a skill, well, not a skill, ability called uh, Survivor Instincts, which the like black and white thing I just did shows you like important objectives or interactable items, and it also like highlights the. Uh, mines, which can be very helpful for the ones in the water, because as you saw, sometimes you just can't really see them since they're underwater. Um, please, <laughs> don't give up mid jump. Thank you. Uh, interesting. Uh, what? So this should be the last mine. Yes. So you can tell from the music there's still a fight trigger. Yeah, there you see the arrows coming. Don't worry about it. So you can actually ignore the guy on the left, I found out somewhat recently, you just need to take care of this guy. The other one will still f shoot at us, but yeah, like, interesting approach angle he chooses. Have to clear out the barriers there at the top, and we do that from the bottom. I like the bongo in the background, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the second guy here can actually block your shot with his bow exactly like that. <laughs> Very nice physics. There's also like this the gun tutorial to start where the other guy can block your shot with the flashlight. <laughs> Bit unfortunate. So yeah, now we're just making our way to another tomb. Uh, this one gets destroyed pretty hard by just one clip. So this is the tomb where you're basically in a flooded uh, room that's also like has obviously exposed electric wirings going through it. it. Turns out if you just clip into it, the electricity doesn't exist. So you just <laughs> wait through the water to the end. It's nice. I prefer the bongo over this. <laughs> game, so. This is yeah, <laughs> also pretty cool. <laughs> Very uh, <laughs> suspenseful. Nice and relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Very comfy at 5 a.m. Not quite probably, but it was worth a shot. Do you think we've got a little bit of time so I can push some of the upcoming bid wars that we've got? Yes, but please at a lower volume. <laughs> <laughs> My, yeah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> uh, let's see. It looks like uh, we've got uh, upcoming bid wars. We've got um, Prey 2017, the Glitch Exhibition. That one uh, is only 400 some dollars away, $437, if my math isn't terrible. Um, only $437 away from being met, so please get your donations in for that one. That one's coming up in a few hours. Um, but the next game that we've got is Retro City Rampage. You can select the color palette that will be used um, for that game. And we've got a few options like GTA 3 or um, Black and White, PC DOS, Virtual Boy. Uh, and they're all only about $30 separated. So um, for Paint the Town Red, we have The Fate of the Traitor. You can show him mercy or show him teach him a lesson. They're actually tied right now at $40 a piece. So if you want to be the deciding factor, uh, you can go ahead and donate toward one of those. 
And uh, it looks like my favorite here is probably the RE7 language choice. Uh, that one right now we have Russian in the lead with $40 uh, and French behind with 15 And then uh, all the other languages are zeroed out. So if you want to get any other languages like English or Spanish into the running, you're only $40 behind from the front runner. So uh, yeah, get those donations in, uh, not only to do some good, but also to pick some of these cool incentives and bid wars that we've got coming up in the next 24 hours or so. Now I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> For how long though, that's the question. <clears throat> but yeah, again, pretty nice timing because I'm coming up just to the end of uh, the first part of beach. The second one will actually be considerably shorter because we actually already got most of the stuff but yeah we're now making our way to the uh, cliffside bunker which then leads to the endurance and that's like the last new area we discover with collectibles apart from the very end game so once we're past the endurance it's just a matter of like clean up basically collect all the stuff we couldn't get on the first visit and then the end game but first we get probably the trickiest skywalk in this category because uh, it's, it has a few very like violent turns and again the same problem as with the previous one like a lot of holes in the collision you can't see and then you kind of want to yeah that's exactly what can happen you need a really good boost up that uh, waterfall but that's like normal also Laura keeps talking about endurance getting torn apart which is, makes practicing this <laughs> very fun Please clip. Oh, oh my god, Lara. Thank you. Not that way. This is fine. Yes, yes, please. Yes, thank you. And then we again use the melee attack to gain some extra height on that slope. And now we can clip inside the bunker without all of that pesky climbing. Checkpoint reload to uh, load in the area fully. And now we proceed in a bit of a strange way because we want to avoid as many encounters as possible. Turns out, like, these pillars can be destroyed by shotgun blasts, which is quite a nice feature, actually. And this one creates the perfect platform for us to actually jump off and take a shortcut. Which is also nice. I can never tell if I actually thought of everything or not, but I guess we will see. I did not. <laughs> but I tried. <laughs> So you can hear the guys spawning at the top, so there will be a few guys with <laughs> very convenient explosive barrel again. Yeah, just hide behind <laughs> explosive barrel. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Alex, what kind of trouble have you gotten yourself into? So this area is not too like convoluted or like complex to get everything from. It's just there's one uh, banner you have to burn that is in a very non-obvious location. It's actually the next one I have to burn. Uh, it's actually <laughs> located all the way uh, up there, which is not where you would usually look. But that's pretty much the toughest part of that uh, area. So I'm not sure we can skip this without the bow. Looks interesting though. <laughs> Don't see that as a challenge pretty far. <laughs> And yeah, now we're going on to uh, like on to do the endurance again. There is one collectible here. There is uh, one weapon upgrade here. Well, not weapon, I guess. Well, it, it, it does attach to the bow, so I guess it's a weapon upgrade. And uh, one cutscene. <laughs> uh, and now he's spotted me early again. It's unfortunate. So we can't attack him while he's like guarding his face, so you have to bait an attack. Sometimes he grabs you though, which is not very cool. Uh, why did you jump? Like yeah, he's trying to grab me. Okay. Clean. And then you just uh, have another QTE. And uh, by defeating him we gain the Rope Ascender, which uh, is a tool that on one hand allows you to pull much heavier objects with your bow, like this. But we can also use it to speed up travel along zip lines a lot, as you will see later on. And 
And luckily that guy had the rope ascender, otherwise we could not have made our way inside the ship. So much has happened. This is also pretty sneaky collectible here because it's right next to you. You don't even see it if you don't move the camera that way. Again, you want to make sure there is no one shooting at you while you're traversing down these zip lines, or else you let go immediately if you get it. And you get that uh, collectible if you miss it here? Yes, like there is, well, uh, some things might happen soon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the part that is not uh, affected by whatever might happen soon. But yeah, collectibles, you should be able to get all of them, even if you miss them once. Like the only thing that you can skip and not get is the uh, campfires. But uh, yeah, like all of them are for casual playthrough right along the way. So unless you do some funny skips intentionally, you should always be able to collect everything by revisiting areas. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the introductory puzzle for the rope ascender. You have to get rid of the wiring in front of the open door there. You do that by uh, pulling around this crane. Which, atta uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Which attaches very nicely to the wiring. And uh, that's Alex in there. He seems to be doing fine. Finally we can save him. Yes, that was worth it for a screwdriver and a wrench. So again, this is another cutscene we can't skip or we don't know how to. I guess. <laughs> Worth it. Alex! Oh well. So this part of the ship uh, will not make it, but the collectible is actually in the front of the ship, which uh, does not sink. Yeah, that was pretty much the last like story event before the, the end game, which we will somewhat soonish get to. But yeah, first, as I said, just a bit of cleanup, filling up all the other areas. We still have some collectibles left in, but yeah, now we have all the upgrades slash tools we need. And yeah, this is the uh, other use of the rope ascender makes going up zip lines a lot faster. And to get back into the cliffside bunker is another convenient uh, object we can drop here. And uh, Lara will inspect some logbooks in this cutscene that tell her where to go. And as it turns out, that would also open the inventory, so we can also alter four in the cutscene. And it prevents the inventory from opening. Pretty good. Now she just opens the book and closes it again. <laughs> Knowledge gained. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I understand. Ancient ruins in the old base. Control over the storms. Any clippers? I need answers. I guess not. I could just open it, but uh, there we go. That yeah, just first obviously cleaning up uh, cliffside bunker. It's one more relic, one more GPS cache, and, and then you. Close Alta for too early. 
And I have one more banner, I think. That's good. And the banner is around the corner. And this is another like use of the rope assembler. You can now get rid of these barriers that are reinforced and then disappear, just shatter into pieces. Doesn't make any sense. I may or may not have said that just to get that reaction. <laughs> yeah, that should be a nice flickering. Uh, should be the end of fifth side bunker. Could check whether I got 100%, but that would kill the suspense, which is what this run is all about. Um, yeah, so just a slow walk back. Obviously, as we saw earlier, this is connected to Shipwreck Beach. Uh, I will only pick up like one collectible here and clear one tomb because we will, like, because of the story, go back to Shipwreck Beach anyways in like a few minutes. And it's way more convenient to collect the stuff then. But once I get past this barrier, I will actually reload checkpoint, even though it like doesn't manipulate any of the AI behavior or whatever. Um, it actually allows us to skip the next longer cutscene that would play at the sh um, at the beach near the campfire. If you don't reload checkpoint there, you cannot skip that cutscene. It's a bit weird. But yeah, there's another GPS cache down here. 13 out of 15 looks good to me. Can you push them off, like the bash? Uh, I have not tried actually. <laughs> but you could try to rope pull them off. <laughs> <laughs> Would be interesting. <laughs> you can do that? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Knowledge gained. <laughs> so this is the cousin I was talking of. Uh, now we can skip it. I said now we can skip it. And uh, yeah, with the Roper Center we can now access this tomb, because it also has this reinforced barrier. And uh, yeah, in case you remember the slow walk into tombs earlier, now we can uh, do roll jumps. So Lara never lights up the torch, which results in a pretty weird, like, dark effect there. But it's way faster to, like... Please hit the one in the back. <laughs> it's way faster to uh, jump roll past the slow walking segment than to actually slake to s take the slow walk. So this is the tomb of the handmaidens. Oh, t sorry, temple of the handmaidens. My bad. Uh, you complete it by hopefully clipping up here. Yeah, like that. Makes sense. And then you use your grenade launch. Again, just waiting like that extra second to make sure I don't lock myself out of 100% completion. And that's that short visit to the shipwreck beach done. Now we will actually like use the fast travel option, which you have available from those like base camp fires. And to go back to a few of the other areas, clear those out, and then go back to the uh, last parts of the story. If I'm going to get to the ritual chamber in that monastery, uh, yes. So here we should just need to collect one GPS cache and complete one tomb, which is very uh, conveniently right here. Both. All right here, like this is the GPS cache and we're already inside the tomb. That's a very uh, convenient uh, campfire. So this next slow walk segment is actually pretty uh, tricky, trickily placed because it starts basically already on this lower platform, but also like on the next one. So you kind of have to like do a jump roll in place to gain the distance and make it a oh that's unfortunate well never mind now you get reminded of how slow the slow walk is <laughs> did not plan to land on the rock on the right there oh well so 
So yeah, this next tomb is basically just the z uh, seesaw puzzle that we hopefully can uh, kind of take a small shortcut by just it's jumping to the end directly. Uh, yes. Well, I said jump there directly. Thank you, Lara. But yes, <laughs> climbers exists allegedly. seen one of the explosions where you get thrown off the floor. Also a bit disappointed in them, not gonna lie. But we have like at least one more chance. Actually I think we only have one more chance. There's only one tomb left, maybe. So here you can see obviously you're supposed to have the torch lighted, but you prevent that with the uh, jump rolling. So that should be all of shanty down, shanty town done. There we go. Next is uh, the summit forest. But I may have called mountain forest earlier, or maybe it is called. No, I think it's called summit forest. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I saw it has 58%, which is correct. So now I just need to collect everything from here on out. Again, the challenge here is to uh, collect the mushrooms. I think we're at like uh, six, six out of ten. We'll see on this next pickup. Yeah, now seven. This next jump can also be pretty tricky because you really need to be on the far left side to really somewhat reliably make it. Because l otherwise, Laura might just not like even take out her like climbing axe, which is uh, not very helpful. Then there's another one hidden down here. How would you ever find that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is a like a tier three ability that you also well unlock with purchasing more uh, skills that actually displays all the collectibles you haven't obtained yet on your map. So I guess that's ah. like how you would get it. And I know that because whenever I forgot one of the collectibles, I need to skill into that <laughs> to <laughs> see what I forgot. Uh, I completely went the wrong way, I think. No, I didn't. Wait, I did. What am I doing? Uh, that's where the house was? Yes, okay. Never mind. Uh. That should be the last one. And now we're conveniently right next to the campfire again. Which allows us to go to Mountain Village. Finally put a bow on that. Will take a bit though. Probably don't watch. <laughs> There's definitely no way to get this earlier. <laughs> Trust me. Just don't. Um. I'm gonna do my best not to explode your eardrums this time, but do you think you've got a minute for me to uh, shout out our um, Alzheimer Funden family over here? Sure, I mean, it's just more uh, collecting. There's not too much to talk about, so go ahead. Okay, great. During this collectathon, uh, we're just gonna shout out Alzheimer Funden, the people we are, uh, the people we are raising money for. Uh, and just a reminder that the goal of the council's work of Alzheimer Funden is to get maximum dividends on the research money for affected patients and their relatives. Uh, we want to make sure that the money is working smarter and not, uh, you know, it's not about quantity, it's about making it work right. Also, this money also goes to organize projects, camps, and events for youngsters, youngsters affected in different ways 
Due to parents or other relatives diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it is a disease that affects the whole support circle and not just the individual. Um, the care costs of Alzheimer's are higher than heart disease and cancer care combined. So please get your donations in and do some good for Alzheimer's funding today. Uh, thanks everyone for your donations so far. Insane timing yet again, just as we enter the tomb. <laughs> what is happening? So that is the last tomb, to my knowledge. Uh, not very reliable to rely upon. Uh, that also makes sense. Yes, it's <laughs> early in the morning. Uh, yeah, but this is technically the first one you can like go into. This is the first one you come across, but we do it last. It just happens with the routing we've chosen. And we can also take a shortcut here by uh, just, uh, landing on top of this cage and then taking the zip line that's supposed to lead you to the exit and just ride it all the way up to the treasure chest. Come on, good explanation. Somewhat sad. So now it's just a few more uh, collectibles all over the mountain village. And for last time, skipping slow walking. Nice, I got the clip. <laughs> Very helpful, not like it makes no difference. I have to remember that I don't have pistol ammo for some reason, so I need to use the machine gun to easily defeat these guys, because my aim is so good, yes, very good, yes, uh -huh. Any clippers? Thank you. So reloading checkpoint here should place me further down the, uh, towards the, yeah, campfire exactly. So I can actually light the, light the statue from there, uh, get the GPS cache on this side, and then just checkpoint reload to go right back and go the other way which is the last part of uh, Mountain Village. Just up here. So this is where we originally came out from, like, after the Russians captured us. But now, since the uh, rescue plane also crashed here, there's this slope that now leads to this hidden part, basically. GPS caches, and there's one more relic behind the wall here. Excuse me. And now it's just one more document. Hopefully, that should be right next to the uh, campfire. And then uh, the most painful moment is uh, going through all the uh, map completion and realizing you forgot something. <laughs> I mean, you can also do it later, but usually I do it here. Uh, on. Nice. That's good. So this one we will complete now. There was one with 93%, but that's also we will go there story-wise, so that's all good, I think. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, then there's one, just one more area where there are collectibles at the very end. So we're somewhat adding to the final stretch. Interesting. Also, there's like a puzzle here where you need to like move an elevator to gain access to this lower floor, but you can just like jump in that spot and not do that. Uh, yes. I totally saw that totem and did not just rely on the reticle turning red. 
Uh, I would like Laro to not lean there. What? Where is he? I can't see. Uh, sure. So as you can see, this climbing animation takes quite a while, which is why we just go into these side areas, checkpoint reload, and now we're like in the middle again. Do the same on the other side, because there is also like crouching slow walk here. That's all of the GPS caches here. Next, we need to actually enter a cutscene because there is a document tied to this. Or I th I'm not sure if it's a document or a relic. One of the two you get here just from being in this cutscene. And then uh, there's supposed to be a fight here that uh, hopefully there will not be by uh, clipping to the top of the platform here. And again, we need to like break free from the game trying to pull us back down, which would be even worse here because it would actually trigger the fight we're trying to skip. And then you also immediately get a checkpoint, so you cannot uh, avoid the fight anymore. But uh, all good. So now this is like in the story, the point where like it all comes together now. We all have the tools and the knowledge we need to uh, get uh, rid of the evil cultists and their attempt to reawaken the goddess. But apparently there is also something happening at the beach. I've got to get back there. Perhaps too late. <laughs> I really don't like not having pistol ammo, uh, ammo but uh, I guess I have to live with it because I don't think there are any more pistol ammo pickups. So there are two more GPS caches I need. And the one is right here and there's very interesting drop that you can't like you can't adjust the camera there so sometimes you just don't even see the platform you need to land on. And another one is on this uh, platform over here with very reli reliable climbing. So there should be just one document and one GPS cache here. she make it? Oh. Never in that. I mean, I kind of was doubting. <laughs> I wonder if that's based on any precedent. So that's what happens if you're too late with the Alter 4 prompts. Yeah. That's like what, what you're trying to skip in the Tory opening. So you may have heard there uh, a jingle. This is actually the a jingle from the classic Tomb Raiders. If you would pick up a secret and they have that here as an easter egg to tell you that you collected all the GPS caches in the game. So that's a good sign. But sadly, that's not the only thing we have to collect, so we might still miss out on something. You're ready to go. But yeah, this is uh, now the uh, final stretch, because now we go inland and uh, Lara, what do you expect to try to face the evil cultists. No, but you so anyway. this is interesting because we can uh, skip the first part of the cutscene, but the second one we cannot. <laughs> Her rage is what's causing these storms. Oh well. Why? <laughs> it looks so skippable. <laughs> but yeah, basically there are just three of us now, due to circumstances. And uh, the tactical sound thing is to go ahead right. by yourself. I think that should work. No. I'll need you and Reyes to guard the main entrance while I go in after Sam. You're going in there alone? More people means more danger of being spotted. Well, that is just like another half a minute, minute of talking and then uh, pretty much uninterrupted uh, endgame. Hopefully. What did he just call her? And this is where some bow skip could happen or could not happen. Yeah, this would be the first section where you have to do something else. We would be able to skywalk <laughs> on the wall. A bit low. And get up that way. And from here you would be able to jump uh, to the platform coming up. Yeah. Like there's a second one we do here. We need to bow for, but yeah. Okay. 
So these, again, you want to angle rather low so you get the sliding animation. It's significantly faster than Lara just like slowly climbing down the zip line. In the next room, there is like the exit is blocked by debris. We need to set on fire. But we also want to alert the uh, guard in here because if we alert him, then the door there on the right closes. And that prevents further guards from entering, so we just shut them out. Just pretty convenient. And in this next part, you're supposed to sneak past all these guards and as I said earlier rolling is usually considered a noisy action but usually if you just mash it here on the first go it should yeah they just don't notice you if you do reload though they will also they definitely don't see Lara just hanging from the ledge there This jump will fail or not. Why would this ever fail? Intruder, let's blow up our fortress. <laughs> yeah, this is where the uh, fire rate upgrade for the shotgun comes in really handy because these are like fully clad in armor, head, torso, and legs. And the, the fire rate just makes these fights so much more easier because everything is a like every zone of the body is a two hit, so you just aim for the torso and do two quick shots without the fire upgrade. It uh, can get dicey, especially if you're like, facing multiple ones of them. but I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, it is fine. No worries. So yeah, this next fight is actually the last one we really have to do. It's called the big fight because it's a big fight. Um, it's basically like separate into multiple waves. Uh, we have pretty like reliable strategies for every single one of them. So in the first one we just have to wait. Like These archers really don't matter. They also fire explosives right in front of them. It's pretty good. And then we just wait until like the melee guys jump over and we just need to kill four of them. And uh, that's not a shotgun. Oops. This guy just darts off, I don't even understand. Like he doesn't even count if you kill him. He doesn't count as an action. So we wait for this guy. And there should be another one, yeah. So in the second one we want to kill uh, three archers and uh, however many melee guys will follow me. Again, this is where the uh, fire rate upgrade comes in really handy because in any percent where we don't get it, yeah, this would be very uh, uncomfortable to do. Well, Lara, that's an interesting route you're suggesting there. But yeah, now we just bait these over because there w it's supposed to be an ambush for us, but we can just turn it around and uh, use that against them. Actually, I killed all of them with that, that's nice, because as soon as you do that, you get the checkpoint. And reload and now we're in the final phase of this fight. Just stock up on some uh, shotgun ammo. And then basically camp this corner here and try to snipe them out of the air. Where they should be one shot in most cases. There are some archers on like the ground that might fire at me which can interrupt me. But uh, should be good. I don't know, not if we missed that but luckily there's an explosive barrel right there. No, I just need to snap three more from like here. It's especially nice to just one shot the shield guys. <laughs> yes. Take way more hits otherwise. Yeah. And that unlocks well unlocks sets through this uh, 
part you can uh, just rip apart. So interestingly, this does not require the rope ascender, even though it's like a super late game area. Which is handy because in any percent we also skip the rope ascender, so if it was required here it would be quite unfortunate. That is the last area that has collectibles and it's very small. Just one relic, one document, and then there are a few uh, checkpoint reloads because the checkpoint is right here, so we can actually go to the ground floor, pick up the relic and just go back up one floor, and then go up further. Back we go, and we do another pretty interesting skip, if it works. And there's a lot of ways to skip this puzzle. Uh, what? So <laughs> <laughs> this is usually the fastest <laughs> way. <laughs> Clip in yeah. here, and then go around the room by... There being just enough collision to go around. I can't even see because it's so bright in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's just for demonstration purposes. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, then you can just fit in here and then we have to just clip above we do by rolling into this uh, small slope that you cannot see yet but hopefully you will be able to see it soon yeah they're on the right which like is similar acting similar to like the bunker at the start or the ledge in shantytown where we had to fuse back the body and the camera so that is the second to last collectible the last one is actually at the last base camp which is basically just around the corner, and that's where we'll do the final 100% check, which hopefully will indeed be a 100% check. And then it's just like five more minutes or something of climbing and jumping. Do you think we have a quick minute so we can go over some of our prizes that our audience can earn? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah, just a reminder that anyone donating besides doing good for Alzheimer Fund. Uh, all your money is collected throughout the marathon, so if you're donating $5 at a time, uh, all it takes is two $5 donations to get you in the running for a Legend of Zelda keychain set. We have a Kirby plush 6-inch. We have a couple of art prints from FromSoft games, a Dark Souls Bonfire one, a Ashen one, a Sekiro uh, Way of the Flame piece of art. We also have an Undertale art book for 15 uh, a Doom Slayer metal poster for 15 uh, and a video games world map for 15. Uh, if you're looking to up your gaming monitor, uh, we do have for a minimum donation of 40 a chance to be in the running for a ViewSonic Elite uh, monitor. They are one of our sponsors today. Thank you very much, ViewSonic. We also have uh, for our uh, retro gamers, we have a Retro Tink, retro -tink 5X Pro with S card adapter. Uh, there's going to be up to three winners of that, and that's uh, for a minimum donation of 50. Also, for the minimum donation of 50, you could and you could be entered into, or you are entered into a uh, raffle for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, there's going to be a total of three winners for that as well. An estimated value of 400 bucks. It could be yours for just 50. And for an estimated val or estimated value of 600, a uh, minimum donation of 100 dollars gets you a chance to win a PlayStation 5. One of two. One will be a EU winner. So a uh, for people that are donating from the EU, and then people that are donating from the US. We also have a PlayStation 5 disc version. So there's going to be two winners uh, on either side of the Atlantic. So if you get your donations in, $100 total gets you a chance in the running for all of our prizes. But uh, yeah, our grand prize is minimum donation of 100 so get your donations in soon. Yeah, speaking of soon, we soon will make it to the top, where the final battle might or might not happen. It remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, just final chance to show the 
very reliable climbing. <laughs> so, I mean, and percent, as I said, we don't have the uh, rope ascender, so if you don't do the bow skip, uh, you actually like have to climb this entire zipline here, for example, just manually. Without this rope ascender, it takes quite a while. But here we can do a pretty nice skip by just dropping down and uh, grabbing the top of this ledge instead of going around. And now it's actually time for the last climbing segment. And then uh, the uh, final boss, which might just be a jump away. So the final boss here is in the middle and you're supposed to go all the way around through a gauntlet of enemies, including a boss, but uh, you can also just not do that by jumping across by using that pillar and then just loading the QTE, which is actually the final boss. So we can get somewhat ready on time, it's in like half a minute. First we just have this QTE. And then as soon as Lara like has the dual pistols and shoots the guy, what is with the screen shaking? <laughs> uh, shoots the guy like 10 times or something. He should fall down and uh, yeah, that's then the time. But making 10 shots at uh, <laughs> 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Let's see. And then we have to see if it's actually 100%. So that's a pretty normal time for taking shots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that's about time. Yeah. So... Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, remains to be seen if it's 100%, because luckily or unluckily for us, there is a uh, completion message that plays after the credits, so I will skip there and then uh, we'll see if I have to continue or not. <laughs> Reset, I mean. Yeah. Uh, totally suspenseful here. No, that looks like 100%. That's good. Okay. Uh. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, that's uh, Tomb Raider 2013, 100% in a bit less than 2 hours 25 minutes. Pretty cool. Thank you very much for uh, staying up or at least pretending <laughs> to be awake. <laughs> I was here the whole time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think my voice needs some rest, <laughs> and so do I. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for having us. It was quite fun. Uh, anything else you want to say? Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all in the need of a bit of rest. So thank you again, Katarev, for uh, for your run. That's Thank you for the 100%. Uh, sorry about your eardrums. I'll do my best next time to remember that it is not 8 a.m. Uh, 8 p.m. everywhere. It's 5 a.m. over there for you guys. So good luck. Get, get some good rest. Uh, and as for everyone else, uh, we're going to go for a short intermission pretty soon. Uh, and we are going to come back with Lost Judgment. It's going to be run by Rebel Dragon 95 and I'm going to leave you uh, our next host. I'm going to leave. Uh, our next host uh, will be Pretty Tony, so I will leave you in his gentle vocal embrace. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, uh, hanging out with us uh, this morning or this evening, wherever you are, and uh, yeah, we'll see you for the next run. Thank you. <laughs>